Hello and welcome to Let Me Boy to Sleep. This is Monday's Sleepy Boring Objects. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And what shall I need to tell you? If you like what I do, then please, you can send me a PayPal gift. My f- website is jasonnewland.com and all my recordings are pretty much on there. I do six versions of each recording, three without music, three with music. And I have quite a few podcasts as well, so they're all listed on my website. Also, I have a Facebook group, Jason Newland's Boring Group, if you'd like to join. And that's it. That's all the boring stuff out. Well, it's not all the boring stuff out of the way, because we're going to be continuing with even more boring stuff. (laughs) Yes. So let's have a look. What should I talk about today? What should I talk about? That, that's my cardigan, by the way. Um, my cardigan zip. I don't know. Hairstyles. I'm going to talk about hairstyles. Yep. Hairstyles. Now, I think I did do a podcast, a Sleepy Born Objects one, about hair. So this might be similar to that. I'm going to talk about hairstyles. That's what I'm going to talk about. I was born in 1970. First, I think I had blonde hair when I was born. Or well, I might have been ginger. Got ginger in uh, in the family. We got the ginger gene in the family. So, who have I got? I think at least three of my cousins have got ginger kids. So, and I think a couple of my grandmother's siblings were ginger it's an Irish thing I think it just comes from the Irish family side I definitely as I got older I had ginger part of my hair was ginger and when I was able to grow a beard there was the, the beard was very ginger Oh yes. So that's not really relevant for the hairstyles though, is it? (laughs) I mean, the first picture, in fact, I've got an idea. Hold on a second. I thought my photo album was around and I was going to have a look at some of my older pictures. To be fair, all the pictures are older. I'm older, but they're older. If that makes sense. You can't have newer pictures, can you? 
kind of newer pictures than what you already are. But they're also older. Yeah, that made sense in my mind. So I've got some pictures. My dad got together a bunch of photographs in... I think it was... Hmm, possibly 2021 and they got photo albums for me and my brothers and sisters and stuff and the pictures of us well there's a few pictures of us like together but it's like through the years as we were children growing up which I hadn't seen for a long time So, the, my hair, I'm trying to think the first time, probably around the age of about eight, I had very, very, very curly hair, very curly hair, like proper curly hair but that was normal in the 70s I'm not saying curly hair is abnormal now but it was definitely I guess the fashion to have longer hair and for it to be messy and I had naturally curly hair which you wouldn't necessarily believe if you was to see me normally especially when I'm bald I'm not bald but when I'm bald because I do shave my head occasionally and my hair was very very messy like there'd be a parting in the side I think that was in the days where we'd have yeah side partings and Hair, my hair was so thick and just yeah it was weird and all of us all all three of us my brother my older brothers and me all had the same kind of hair very very large hair and that kind of carried on all the way up to the age of I mean, I'm not, I did have haircuts. You know, it wasn't like I never had my hair cut. I did. But it was more just very basic, basic-y cutting. Now, I don't, I'm not sure if we ever went to the hairdressers. We might have done, or to the barbers. Although I do remember one of my stepmom's best friends who was a hairdresser coming round to our house and cutting all of our hairs and it was just I'll, I'll be honest I don't think I cared really what I looked like when I was a kid I didn't spend a lot of time looking in the mirror wondering how other people perceived me what, I don't think that really happened didn't care. I mean, I probably wouldn't have even brushed my hair if I wasn't told to. And then things changed. Things changed when I went into the Sea Cadets. And I... I don't know how often, probably every couple of months, they would give us a crew cut. Like everyone, everyone in the Sea Cadets would all get a crew cut. So, which is basically, it's not bald. If you don't know what a crew cut is, it's uh, it's basically a forces thing, a military thing. And like number four or whatever. So, it's all shaved, but there's still a little bit of hair left. And I had that for about two years. 
and then I'm trying to think I did oh wow once I finished with the sea cadets I went back to having hair again again I don't think I was that bothered by it I just for me you know if if a female liked me then it had to be on my personality <laughs> not my hair I don't know I, I just didn't I don't think I was particularly interested in hair until I got to about 15 14 maybe 14 then I became probably around 13 I became a bit more self-conscious about how I looked you know once the spots started and the acne and the I don't know if it, I think the changing rooms after sports or before sports time you know was the worst at school because there's all these there's quite a few fully grown adults getting changed and I'm not talking about the teachers. I'm talking about the the other students because they were some of them were nearly a year older than me, and I was very underdeveloped. I still am, I think, but I I was very uh, late developing. I'm not even sure if my voice broke before I left school. To be honest, to be honest, I'll be honest. I, I won't lie. I can't lie. <laughs> I've been hearing some people say that on um, Big Brother. Slay is one, one thing. What was the other saying? This girl, she's um, oh, it was annoying. Hearing her talk, she said, uh, "Okay." Yeah, I say what I say with chest. It's, a, it's, it's it's what she said. It's, it's like it's a very. I guess it's just a very mixed cultural kind of mix, and she. It was weird. The things that she used to say, was very. I mean, she, she's is now finished, Big Brother. Uh, for this year but I couldn't get my head around some of the phrases I know I'm out of touch with all that but I don't think I was ever in touch with it oh, I never talked street you know I mean I used to sort of say you know what I mean and you get me and um, what that was, you know that was about as street as I got and then I remember probably 2001, I started hearing this new type of talking that was happening in London. And it was, uh, it was just people saying things like, oh, it's just a minor. All right, fam. And now it's become almost like it's uh, a normal way to talk. But at the time, it was, it was a fad. It was just like trying to reinvent the language, I guess, again. And maybe they did it in the sixties, and maybe it was done in the seventies. But I don't feel that my generation really did it. I might be wrong, and I did say things like "cool." And I didn't say cool, cool. And I do still say groovy, which no one said pretty much since about 1966. And then there was that, that phrase, swear down, which is almost a joke phrase, which no one really ever said. It's like It was like almost... I swear down, like, I'm telling the truth, swear down. And people just say it as a joke. 
And now I hear people say it for real. Like they're genuinely saying it. And I don't like. When did it go from being a joke to being real? I mean, in the 90s, it was also a joke where a lot of the, the young Indian children or the children of Indian parents, they'd be going in it and they'd be saying it out of context. So instead of it's cold in it, they'd be going, I'm hungry in it. Uh, I'm trying to think of other examples. But it was almost like you were doing it as a joke. And then it, like, it kind of stuck. And it spread through London. And people were saying, in it, when it wasn't, like, it wasn't, it made no sense. It was uncontextual, I think. In it, you know what I mean? I mean, I used to say in it. But I like light bulbs in it. I'm trying to think of some more, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's just a weird, weird thing. But maybe, and I see this now with the, there's a lot of different kind of culture now. And some of the talk, and I don't understand hardly any of it now. Like Slay, kept hearing that. I looked it up and it was, it's an uh, like an LGBTQ thing. So that's probably why I've not heard it, because I'm not in that community. I guess. I like to think that I'm in all communities, but in no communities. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, I'm in the community of the world. However, I've known lots of people in the past that were part of that community, and I never, ever heard them talk like that. Never heard them use the word slay. And what I noticed is some people, they'll keep saying it. They get like a, a it's, is it because they're trying to fit in? Maybe. Maybe I was just really lucky because I never fitted in, so I stopped trying. If you never fit in to start with, you don't have to try and fit in. It's just easier. I think the only time I ever wanted to fit in and I didn't, you know, I really wanted to fit in was the comedy industry. When I was doing comedy, I, I so wanted to be part of that. And I, I was part of it. And I was involved in it for 20 years, but in different aspects. But I didn't, mainly behind the scenes to be fair, but I so wanted to be I don't know, equal? To feel like I was somebody that was respected. Maybe not even respected, accepted. Yeah. And I think I got a little bit of that once I was working behind the scenes. Because there'd be times when I'd be phoning up comedians to offer them a gig. And it'd be nice to me. Once they knew that I was, once it got around, I mean it wasn't my, I was just doing it on behalf of the club. The comedy club. But once people got to hear about it, the other comedians, oh Jason's Jason called up and he's uh, gave me a gig on Thursday night and people started to come up to me and talk to me. The comedians that perhaps used to ignore me before. It's weird, isn't it? You know what I noticed though? The more successful the comedians were, the nicer they were to me. Not always, but... Like people, for example... I mean, Lee Evans always used to say hi to me, but I never had a conversation with him. But he'd say hello to everyone. He's a lovely, lovely man. And he's always friendly to everyone. I think 
pretty much anyone would tell you the same thing about Lee Evans that ever worked with him or, you know, in the 90s and that. But other comedians like Lee Mack, he was lovely to me. Admittedly, he wasn't famous back then. He was only just restarting out. He actually he told me once that he liked my act. Blimey. This was about 98. I was like, what, really? <laughs> it's like, you like my act? I've been doing this for eight years. No one's ever told me that before. And, and he went on to be, yeah, a big, big comedy star in this country. He's, I've, he's one of the people, out of all the comedians, he's one of the people I've seen the most of during the 90s and the early 2000s. Him... And Jimmy Carr, uh, Al Murray, Rich, oh blimey, what's his name, Rich, Rich, whatever his name is, Omid Dajali, 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 Omid Dajali, I think his name is, another one, Rich Hall, I said Rich Hall, Trying to think of some of the other ones that were really that went on to be famous. I saw Harry Hill loads of times. He was always really friendly to me. He'd actually chat to me, and I would say other than Lee Evans and yeah, in the nineties, in like the earlier nineties. Other than Lee Evans, there was only one person I saw, like English, English comedian, that was so clearly going to be a big star. Like, it was almost guaranteed. I mean, actually, there was, there was more than one, but Harry Hill was one of the ones that I really just, it was all, it was understood. Everybody knew in the comedy scene, that Harry Hill was going to be a big star. And he was. He, did, he went on to be a big star. But he was also lovely. And he didn't care where he performed. Honestly, he'd be doing a Friday and Saturday night at the comedy store and jonglers. He'd be like doing four gigs a night. Earning loads, huge amounts of money like headlining he might do the comedy store twice the early show then the late show they go to banana cabaret go to the comedy cafe and do all those in one night earning i don't know 500 pound or whatever you know back then it was a lot of money and then on a monday night he'd go to the comedy pit and maybe earn 10 pound because he just wanted to do the gigs. He wanted to use, try out new material. There might only be an audience of 10 people. And he didn't care. He just did every possible gig he could to get the experience. And yeah, so I got to know him because of all, the, all over the, some of the little clubs that he did. I got to know him because of that. Really friendly. trying to think uh, who else what's this got to do with hairstyles well the comedy pit was uh, run by Robin Banks that was his stage name and he had long hair and he was it's really weird I always thought he was a bit of a gangster because he he kind of gave that impression that he was I don't know, just there was something a bit, I'm going to say dodgy, I always got on well with him, he was a friend, so I, I was, he would give me gigs and I was, you know, I did get on really well with him, but he always gave me that vibe of being a bit dodgy. It turned out he was a school teacher, <laughs> it was nothing dodgy about him at all really, he was, he was a school teacher, he had kids, he was married, had a mortgage, but when he wasn't doing that, he was running these comedy clubs in these dives, that hence the comedy pit. And there'd be these like little dungeons in little pubs. 
Streatham and places where no one wanted to go at night. It was, it was I didn't care, but it's, it was weird. You have to be careful because you might not get home. I mean, I don't mean in a weird way, but just uh, the trains and stuff because it wasn't central. And he had these gigs all around the place. And it was always like comedy pit at wherever area it was. Hackney. Or the comedy pit at Streatham. Um, comedy pit at Peckham. You know, so it's those kinds of things. And one, I think he had a his birthday... And he invited me to a birthday thing. And there was only a few of us there. And I, I don't know if it might have been after the gig. In, in fact, I think it was actually on a Saturday night. It was actually always... No, I think it was actually a party. But it was a very small thing. And I met him at this place. I'd never been there before. And it was some high-class place. Like, really... I felt very out of place there. It was almost like a kind of like a casino, high. It's hard to explain it. I still don't know what it was, but I kind of felt I had to get out of there. It wasn't it wasn't the right place for me to be. I almost thought I was going to get ripped off by someone, and I didn't have any money. I probably went there with about £10 in my pocket. And so, yeah. And they were, like, handing out champagne. And I thought, oh, no. It's going to be one of those... Uh, what, what do they call it? Did I ever tell you? Wow, clip, jo clip joints. I actually got ripped off. I went into a clip joint once. Well, maybe more than once. But anyway, let's talk about the first one. I went to a clip joint, didn't know, didn't know what a clip joint was. And basic clip joints, just somewhere where they rip you off. And I went in there, it was in Windmill Street in Soho. I was 19. And yeah, I might have even been 18. I think I was 19, 18 or 19. Went in there. No, I was 19. That's it, I remember now. 19, just turned 19. Went in there, I was living in Stratford. And there was, I think it was a man or a woman standing outside. And there was this alleyway, not a good sign really. And said, oh, there's a bed show upstairs. There's a, uh, I thought, okay, I've always liked beds. So I, I thought, okay, let's go. Let's just just see what this is. So I went up, and a lady comes up to me. So I sit down. There's no one else in there. It's very dark. And the lady says, "Would you like a drink?" I said, "Oh yeah, I'll have a coke, please." Because I only had probably. Seven pound on me in change, and I can't believe I've never told you this story before. Wow, what's this got to do with haircuts? Well, I think my hair was quite curly, but it was I at that time before I moved there. I used to spend. See, I can always get it back to the topic eventually. This was just after I was canvassing for double glazing. So I'd been canvassing double glazing during the summer. And I would put foam in my hair and style it with a hairdryer. And it was so... I used to spend ages making my hair look nice. Ages and ages and ages. But when I moved to London, I don't think I really bothered so much. And I, 
What did I do? Yeah, so my hair was kind of... I think it started to grow out a little bit at that point. See, I'm, I'm keeping it valid. I'm keeping it topical <laughs> for the hair styles. I will go back to previous hairstyles as well. But this clip joint, so I go in there, sit down, lady comes up to me, would you like a drink? I said, yes, please, I'll have a Coke. She said, okay. She goes away, comes back with a Coke. I said, I don't want any ice, though. She said, but there's ice in it already. I said, but I don't want any ice. She said, drink it with the ice. I said, but I don't want any ice. She said, don't make me angry. Have the ice. I said, what do you mean don't make you angry? What, are you going to turn green? And she looked at me. She gave me that look. And I realised that she was already green. None of that happened. So I, I just, I took the drink, Coke, and I looked around. And she said, would you like some company? I said, no, you're right. <laughs> and she went away. And within about, I was just sitting there, nothing was happening. And within probably four or five minutes, some very large man is standing over me as I'm sitting there. And he hands me a, like a folder thing with a bill in. And I say, okay. And I look at it. And I think they want something like 25, 30 pound or something like that. It's like, okay. It might have even been more than that. But it was a lot more than the seven pound I had in my wallet. And I, I swear even now, I swear down. You get me. Nothing but a minor. Uh, it's all gravy, baby. Now, he was standing over me and he was trying to intimidate me. And it was working. And he kept repeating, uh, your bill, please, sir. And I like, I said, it's £35. I had, all I had was a glass of Coke. Your bill, please, sir. Putting on his deepest voice. And I was saying, but I only had, I had. That was my actual voice at that time. That's my real voice, by the way. If you ever think I'm putting on a weird, a silly voice, that's my normal voice. This is a fake voice. This is my normal voice. See, but I didn't think that it would go so well. If I talk like this all the time, that's why I don't. No, if, especially doing the hypnosis recordings. Now relax. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Relax. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. See, it probably, I don't know how that would be if I did it. I suppose I could try and do it in a more relaxed way. You are very relaxed and calm. Yes. Yes, you are. Ah. See, that's, that's why I put on this fake voice that I've got now. Anyway, he's just standing over me. Uh, at one point I thought he was going to relieve himself in my glass and I was like what 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 Bill please sir Bill please I honestly kept saying it and I said bro well, what what are you going to what I said look I stood up and I said look I ain't got no money I've not even drunk this Coke. If you can, why can't you just 
put it back in the in the can. He didn't give me a whole can. A can of Coke back then cost about 20 pence. Yeah, probably about 20 pence. So it really... It wasn't worth £30 or £27, or whatever it was they were asking for. And I said, what's the money for? What's it? I said, well, you had... Uh, you're paying for the company of the lady. I said she asked me what I wanted to drink. It's hardly company. It's hardly a date, is it? I didn't say any of that stuff. And I said, "Well, I was, I was scared. I'll be honest, I was. I was scared." And I said, "Look, I think they took me. They took me into a room. They said, follow me, sir." It took me this to this little room. I think it's an office. And said, "Bill, sir, you need to pay your bill." And I said, "I ain't got no money." I said, "Look, here's what I got. I emptied my pockets. That's all I got. Is probably probably less than seven pound. That's all." My, he he started laughing. He broke character. He broke character. And uh, he said, he actually laughed. And then he stopped and he said, well, you need to pay your bill. I said, well, I can't, can I? You just, you know, he said, well, empty your, empty your other pockets and what's in your bag. So I had some stuff in my bag. I think I had my glasses. This is when I used to wear glasses just for reading. And I had a book, which, yeah, I had a book as well, probably. And I might have bought a book. That might have been why I went to the West End to start with. And it got sidetracked. You know, every, every now and then when I'd buy a book, I'd just start thinking of beds and Coke, Coca-Cola. So... Yeah, it didn't go so well. But in anyway, I said, look, here's all I got. And he said, all right, we'll take that. I said, yeah, but I need some money to get home. I need train fare, which was like two pound or something, probably. And he laughed again. I said, well, I can't walk from here to Stratford, can I? Because it's so high. It's a, it's a long... It's, anything's walkable, I suppose, if you're willing to do it, but that's a long, long old journey. So he gave me back my, gave me back some of the money, and he kept the rest. And uh, I think he shook my hand. So that was the first time I got mugged. That's a mugging, isn't it, really? And then I left vowing never to go back and then the next time I was in there I actually did go back and not to that I went to a different one it's like I didn't learn I really didn't learn and but this time I was prepared for some reason and I went in and I said oh, I'll get a drink but I'm gonna pay for it now I guess maybe I was hoping that this one would be a proper place and there really would be a bed to look at. And I didn't know what a bed show was. I've seen comedy shows. I've, I've seen singers, but I've never seen a bed do anything. And I'm, I've never done anything in a bed other than sleep. Well, and, you know, fart. So, I, yeah, the second time... The bill came through and it was like 20 quid. So I thought, I've got to stop doing this. Just for a, a Coke. It's just pointless for a, a, just a, a glass of Coke, 20 pound. So yeah, I just, uh, I think that's the last time I went in. Um, did I do it again? I don't think I did it again. I wasn't big on learning. Learning wasn't really my thing back then. It's a more recent thing, the last week or so. So, 
So my hairstyles, when I was about 13, 14, I think, I did two things to my hair. Okay. I did a half perm. Now, I did it myself. No, I did I do it myself. No, I didn't do it myself. I went to the hairdresser and got a half perm. Now, I think, I don't think they knew what they were doing because only half my hair was curly at the end of it. So I got a little bit of ribbon at school. And then I decided, and this might be because of my oldest brother, he was quite creative with his hair. He had long hair and he used to wear a hat, a like trilby hat. And I wanted to be like him. And I dyed my hair like brown-ish, like dark brown. So what I thought I'd do is, as it was the first time I was dyeing my hair, I just dye it the colour it already is. And then, you know, go from there. <laughs> but it wasn't, it came out very strange. It was a weird colour. But it, it didn't last for long and it grew out and that was fine. I mean, I got quite fast growing hair, well, especially that back then. Then the next time I did anything particularly dramatic to my hair, as far as hairstyles go, is in 1989, I think, 1989, yeah, I think, see, I got this memory, got this memory, okay, so let's have a look, Bross, When did that out? See, I've got a memory, and I think I've uh, completely formed in 1986. They achieved chart success and large teenage fan base in 1988. 1988. So, discography released March. Oh, okay. January, February, March. 1988 so the album yeah that's fair enough so it would have been probably 1988 I yeah 1988 I dyed my hair blonde and got it cut like Bross like Matt and Luke Goss from Bross and I had both of my ears pierced. Because I thought by having the same hairstyle. And have my ears pierced like they were. That like they had. That I would be good looking. You can probably figure out how that worked out. It didn't. In reality what happened. In reality is and I had this done professionally went to a hairdresser's not the earrings although they, they might have done the earrings as well no where would I have got the earrings done jewellers maybe I don't know but I got it all done the same day so when I left my scalp was red. My hair was yellow. It wasn't blonde, it was yellow. And my hair, my scalp was red. Raw red from the dye or from the bleach. And my ears were infected. <laughs> it was it was quite a weird, quite a little weird period. 
and then whenever we whenever I went out with my friends, people I seemed to be getting hit on by men. I didn't really understand it, and I was like, "Why?" And then my friend said, "We were in a gay club." So, like, oh, okay. So we was in. It wasn't a gay club, but it was. There was a couple of gay pubs that were not officially gay pubs because I don't think they had them, not in the little town I lived in. But it was well known. But well, other than that, I didn't know. But it was a place that was run by a gay man, and it was a place where people used to hang out, and. It was a really great atmosphere, probably the best atmosphere in town. And a few of my friends were in there, so it'd be quite cool to sort of hang out and have a drink and that. But I just couldn't understand why men kept coming up to me and, to be fair, usually laughing. A couple, a couple seemed to like me. Yeah, worked out quite well. <laughs> All I wanted was to look like Bross. And it opened up a whole different direction in my life. So, I'd, yeah, I didn't get any of the correct attention that I wanted from the ladies. Not even one lady. I made them laugh, but that wasn't really what I was aiming for. No, it isn't. So what I did, I didn't like my hair, but I had to wait to do something with it because my scalp was red raw for a while. It healed, it got all flaky and then it healed. And as soon as it's grown out a little bit, I shaved it off. I got a crew cut, uh, like I had when I was in the Sea Cadets, and that was in blimey see so it doesn't so I'm for me it was 1989 unless it was 89 that I did that it might have been at 89 because my memory is this I shaved my head so I had a crew cut again for the first time since I was 13. And this is when I was 18. Which would have been the summer 1989. And then I traveled through France with my bald head, well, my my very extremely short hair and I got a suntan for the first time in my life for some reason the sun in France is different to the sun here they got a different sun there and I didn't, I didn't burn we were travelling all through the mount, the mountains and the whatever uh, hitching and getting trains and getting buses and walking and we, me and this bloke did that for about five days, five or six days, and I, I went brown. Never gone brown before or since. I don't think I even had any blisters on my feet. See, that doesn't make sense because if I did that, and that was 89. How did I go from having a crew cut in the early summer to by August having long enough hair to be styling it? I suppose my hair just grew quickly, perhaps. Hmm. Yeah. That's strange. And then after that, I didn't really do anything dramatic to my hair. I just have it cut every now and then. And I moved in with my dad for a little while in 91. 
I moved away from London, moved in with him in about April, April-ish, 91, until September, I lived with him. And I don't think I did anything particularly spectacular with my hair. This is 1990. Did I say 91? 1990. And then, in 1991, around probably Easter time, I decided to grow my hair. And I remember announcing it. I mean, the people on the bus didn't seem interested, but anyway, I still announced it. I had one of these little megaphones. And I decided I was going to grow my hair long. Not just grow it, but grow it long, like proper long. But I also knew from previous experience that I have very curly hair. It grows quickly, or it used to grow quickly, but it used to be very curly. Very curly. I mean... At school, they used to call me puby, which was rude, very rude. Didn't know what it meant until I was about 14. So I, yeah, especially at the sides, it grows out at the sides and it grows out at the front and it curly at the bottom. So that it's straight until it's not. You know, it's, it, it, so I have straight hair now, but it's starting to go curly at the sides. And my only combat from walking around, I couldn't walk around my hair like that. You know, as I was growing it out, I could not walk around like that. So I wore a hat. And I had to wear a hat until it was, long enough to put into a ponytail and I think my auntie I visited probably visited my nan I don't know what part of the year it was if it was in that year I think it it was in the same year but it was long enough to just get into a ponytail probably not the front but the back you know most of it was maybe the front was kind of still sticking up but it was just about long enough to get into a ponytail and that was that was me set and it was just an elastic band to start with I wanted to see how I felt I didn't want to invest in a hairband because that was like a pound for 20 so I didn't I didn't want to fork out I wanted to just see how it works if it suited me if it was how I wanted to live my life. You know, I wanted to, I wanted, I didn't want to make that commitment just yet. And then I did, I had long hair, but the the problem it was, was it was so curly. I mean, as it was growing, I looked a little bit like Bob Dylan. Like it, well, I was young, so a young, a young Bob Dylan, with that curly hair, because I had the same kind of hair as Bob Dylan, very curly. Now, had I known that I could have done something with it, I would have straightened it and I would have made it nice and straight and lovely. But it was so curly, so when it was back, it was still. And very gingery as well. So it was very curly and it was... Whenever I took it out, it just sprung. I remember once uh, I took it out in the lift and I was stuck in the lift for three days. I couldn't get out. Because it just pinned me to either side of the elevator. And I was like, oh no. But it wasn't all bad. I remember I, I fell out of the window... And uh, I pulled the ponytail off and I just landed on my head and bounced. So that was good. 
So, yeah, none of that happened. But, yeah, I did have very long hair. went down to about the middle of my back. And I kept that hair. Every now and then I'd go to the hairdressers or the barbers. It was Italian. And that's not his fault. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> it was like, I loved him. He's a really nice bloke. And he used to get so excited. And he'd always, he'd always, he'd always pretend to accidentally cut off the ponytail. And he used to call me ponytail. And the petrol, the, the local shop used to call me ponytail as well. That was the, everyone had nicknames in East London. It was always, if you wore, when I, yeah, in a place I worked, they called me Professor because I wore glasses. So it's just one of those things, you know. If, um, if someone's, if someone's late, they'll call them on time. If someone's short, they'll call them lurk, lurch. If someone's really tall, uh, if they're, no, someone's short, they'll call them lurch. If they're, if they're tall, they'll call them shorty. It's that kind of weird sort of thing that seemed to happen in the East End of London. It might happen everywhere, I don't know. They also struggled with um, non-English names. So they'd, or they'd be naming, renaming people. It's very biblical. Your name is Zakala, Zakalala. I'm going to call you Paul. Your name is Chinawala. I'm going to call you Peter. And that's what they did. They used to name people, give them different names to make it easier for them. Andre was too complicated for the bosses at the place I worked. Andre was too complicated. That's called him Andy. Andrew or Andy. I mean, Andre, it's not. How is that hard? Uh, it took me a while to learn it, but I'm just saying generally, considering he was a team leader, he was like, he was, you'd think they'd learn his name. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, in 90, in 93, I actually got a girlfriend and she liked me for my hair. I mean, I was just pleased to have someone like me for something. And she liked my hair. Now, this is someone that I'd previously had a little bit of a, a flirtatious moment with previously when I was 17. Or, eight, no, 18. And I was 23 at this point now. And she'd never, she hadn't seen me with long hair before. She hadn't seen me for a while. And it did it for her. She, it was something she liked. So we started dating. And I learnt this the hard way. If someone's with you just because of your hairstyle and you decide to change your hairstyle, maybe have a word with them first. Just just out of like I mean ultimately our own our hairstyles ours our hair is ours so we do whatever we want with it but it kind of ruined the relationship when I had my hair trimmed off she didn't like me anymore didn't fancy me anymore I said why she said well I can't cover your face anymore can I I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I liked it when I could, I could pretend it, could pretend you were someone else. It's like, that's a bit rude, isn't it? She said, you're rude. You didn't tell me you were going to cut your hair. I said, why? This is my hair, my body. Why have I got to get permission from you for what I do with my own body? And she said, yeah, you can be like that, but I don't like you anymore. I was like, we still stay together. Stay together for the kids. 
No, we didn't have any kids. Yeah, we didn't know. I thought, why did we stay together for? Uh, we didn't really stay together because this was in the summer and the relationship was pretty much over by then. We just hadn't announced it. We were planning to, <laughs> planning to do it on the train together, just telling everyone. And it's weird because I went to the hairdressers or the there was barbers. Italian. It was Italian. I can't remember his name. But it was a really nice bloke. I liked him. And it was funny. And I'd every, every time I walked past, because I had to walk past there to go to work, if he saw me, he'd like do the do the um he'd completely ignore the person he was working on. And he'd pretend like he was cutting off my ponytail. It's this, it's, it's a bit it's a bit threatening, really, isn't it? If you think about it. Um, yeah, but he lived around a corner from where I lived, both times. So I lived just not far from where he was, and I li- literally lived around the corner as well. So he's I kind of I lived near him twice, or near where he, you know the barbers. I don't know if it was his daughter that started working there. I'm not sure. Because I was around for over 10 years, so... Yeah, he was my he was my hairdresser or my barber for over 10 years. When I went in there, eventually I said, I'm going to... He said... Uh, I said he charged me a fit, did He said, I don't know, we've got, got a queue of people waiting and... We'll be closing in an hour. I said, "Oh, don't worry." I said, uh, "No, I just want to. I want to get my hair trimmed. I want to get the pony cow cut off." He said, "What?" He said, "Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have it all cut off." And he said, "Okay, everyone, everyone out." <laughs> Kicked everyone out. He said, "Come back. Come back tomorrow. We're closing early." That might be a lie, and. Uh, Honestly, I've never seen anyone so excited in my life. He'd been waiting for... So, probably 91, 92, 93. Over three years. Nearly four years. He'd been waiting to get rid of that ponytail. And he finally did it. And he was... I know he had a kid and he had a family and... He was married, but I reckon that was the highlight of his life. Cutting that ponytail off. That's what I think. It might not be true. (laughs) It might not. And it's kind of strange. The reason I did it is because I woke up that day. It was a Saturday. And... I couldn't get the brush through my hair. My hair was so frizzy, sticking out, and I had a tantrum. And I thought, nope, I've had enough of this. Which is weird, considering the effort it took to grow it, and how much I kind of loved having long hair. Had I treated it a bit better... And put product in my hair, which would have caused it to straighten. And yeah, if I looked after it, I possibly would have had a better, a better deal. And that might be part of the reason why I was receded. A lot of people, if you who have receded, you see that they used to have long hair. And I think it might be because you're pulling your hair back into a ponytail and maybe it weakens the roots a little bit at the front. I don't know if that's true. And I'm trying to think, what was the next thing, the next journey I had? So that was 94. And then 95, 96. 97 I had quite a nice tidy hairstyle in 95 and 96 
and 97. Not 97, 95 and 96. In 97, things went downhill generally. And I stopped kind of looking after myself. I didn't, I wasn't very well. So my hair was a little bit scraggy. And then I, in 98, like January time, I had my hair cut nicely and I started using Brill Cream, which I'd never, never done before. And I started trying to sort of dress a bit better and I had more confidence just had more confidence in myself and it was quite nice it felt nice and I had that same hairstyle I just always go and get it recut at the same place with my my barber I'd normally go there on a Saturday probably once a month occasionally I'd let it grow a little bit longer but generally I wanted it to stay so if, if you want your well, this is what I used to figure if I want my hair to stay in the same design, then I need to go and get it trimmed while it's still in that design or that style, because otherwise the barber might decide to do his own style. So if I just say, I want it like this, but just a little bit trimmed off. So he knew exactly what I wanted. And the more regular I went, the more he kind of knew exactly what I wanted. Because before that time, I didn't, it wasn't really a thing. It just like, just cut me hair. And it all worked out okay, generally. But this is when I became a bit more. The, for the first time since 1989, I became, apart from when I had the long hair, I mean, but I became very... conscious self-conscious about my hair and put a bit of effort into it I mean when I had long hair I didn't put any effort into it it was just in a ponytail or it was loose poking people in their eyes knocking children off their bikes <laughs> it was it honestly it was like it was weird it was like the Medusa except nothing like the Medusa and Right up to 2001, I had my hair like this, like decent, nice, like that. It was very stylish, broad cream, and I noticed I started to get a couple of greys, only a couple, right at the front, and I was starting to recede a little bit, but not, not a huge amount. And then I moved out of London started the job in what's its name uh, Churchill Insurance and because I didn't have my regular barber to go to I didn't really know where to go and my hair started getting a little bit out of control and It probably wasn't until 2002, to like probably uh, summertime probably that I started to make my hair look a bit better. But then what happened is I didn't discover Buddhism. But I did, I, you know, I, I was already kind of into it anyway. But in 2000, it was November 2002, I became involved in the Buddhist Centre in the town that I was living. And I was really, really, you know, like, really loving it. And what I did, I can't remember what, what part of the year it was. 
I think it was quite early in 2003, I shaved my head. I bought some clippers and I shaved my hair off. It was still, it wasn't to the bone, but pretty much to the bone. You know, it, it was very, very, as short as you can get without actually shaving it with a razor. And I started doing that every Sunday for quite a while. I had my hair that kind of length all the way through 90, uh, sorry, 2003, all the way through 2004. Maybe part of two. I'd go through periods when I'd shave it, but I'd also shave it with a razor as well. Like completely to the bone. And. I didn't need to. Because I wasn't bald. At that time. I mean I've got a bald patch on the back of my head now. It's. I think it's just. The, the reverse aging isn't it. I think I was bor born. I think I definitely was born. And the hair, I was bald, and then the hair grew, and now the hair's going. So, it's just on that bit which is, I guess, was the original soft spot on my head. Not soft anymore. Although it's a little bit denty. Not dainty, denty. Denty. Yeah, so I kind of shave my head regularly. Sunday afternoon during Smallville. Do you remember Smallville, Superman television show? I used to watch that and shave my head while that was on. I mean, the shaving didn't take long. And I had this moisturizing cream that smelled so good. And I used to put that on my scalp and massage my scalp. And oh, it was nice. And I kind of kept that up until the end of 93 when I ended up having to leave my job because I just couldn't handle it anymore. And I, I still was shaving my head. I was involved even more with a Buddhist center. I worked in a gift shop downstairs and was part of things, you know. So I was shaving my head quite regularly. And I, mean, I didn't have to, but I just, I just, I just wanted to. Yeah, pretty much. And so I started letting my hair grow back a bit in about 95, 95, 2005, sorry, 2006. To, I mean, every now and then I'd shave my head. Every now and then. It wasn't like regularly. But it was probably... Yeah, every now and then. So I don't remember so much those years about sh what happened to my hair. And I don't remember... Don't remember going to a hairdresser's. Which means I might not have done. I might have just let it grow until it was too long and then shave it off. And I remember when I started doing my degree course, the first one. Oh yeah, degree course. I need to focus on that. I've got four days left to finish the uh, first assignment. Or to start the first assignment. It has to be in by the 21st of November. 21st November, 23 days, 2 days, 24th, I don't know. And I shaved... Yeah, I got there and I moved into this new place in the town where the university was. And I decided to shave my head because it was getting too curly and out of hand. And I shaved it on possibly the coldest night of the year. For some reason, I chose that night to shave my head. And 
that was a shock to the system. And I think it was snowing outside the next day. And I was like, oh. And I pretty much kept that going. I don't... The last time I went to the hairdressers was probably when I lived in town. Maybe, yeah. So, and that's over 10 years ago nearly. I might have had my hair cut in hairdressers since I've lived here. I used to go, I started going in this Turkish one. It's not their fault. <laughs> I like to say that, it's just it's a meaningless society. They they used to do this thing with the cotton wool and set, try and set fire to my hair and stuff. It was nice. And the... I didn't like being in the window. I said that to the, to the hairdresser or to the barbers. I said, well, why don't you sit on the chair then? You don't have to sit in the window. In fact, we'd prefer if you didn't. It's very weird, so I'm a third cow sit in the chair. But I, did, I said, I don't want to be near the window. He said, well, sit in a different chair then. I said, is that okay? He said, yeah, it's fine. So I went and sat in a different chair. And he said, no, not that chair. That's my chair. I said, what do you mean it's your chair? He said, you're sitting in the office. That's my office chair. I can't cut your hair when you're sitting in that chair, can I? I said, I don't know. I, I, you, didn't, you weren't specific. Which chair do you want me to sit in? He said, sit in one of the chairs out there. So I sit down. I said, no, that's where the people are waiting to have their hairs done. Why, why, why can't you just, there's three seats to choose from. The ones in front of the mirror, they're red, they're a different flavour to the others. You know, it's like, what's going on? I said, I don't know. He said, you're just trying to drag this story out, aren't you? I said, yeah, a little bit. Why? I don't know, just sometimes uh, if I find a little mundane story, I try and add a little bit of bit of flesh to it, you know, make it a little bit more creamy. Creamy? I said, yeah, I know, it sounded wrong when I said it. It sounds even worse hearing you say it. He said, creamy? <laughs> that was weird. I said, you're weird. Anyway, I used to go in there and then... When I moved here, pretty much the last quite a few years, yeah, yeah, quite a few years, I've just been shaving my head. So, not always to the bone. Sometimes it's been a crew cut, but not always to the bone. But generally, that's what I do. I just do it myself. I shave it off, have a crew cut, and just let it grow until I don't, I can't stand it anymore, then shave it off again. There was a hairstyle I had that I didn't really enjoy. And this was, this is before I shaved my head when I was at college. And that's why I shaved it off. And that was the snowy day. So I started college in October. I moved into this place in November. And it started snowing in December. That sounds like a Craig David song. And I needed to have my hair cut. Oh, I just remembered there was a hairdresser around the corner. So I used to go into there. So I shaved... Yeah, I guess I didn't know about the hairdressers at the time. So I I went to college and I bought I bought some Brill Cream. Not a college, they didn't have a Brill Cream shop there. So I bought some Brill Cream, probably from Sainsbury's. There was also around the corner. It was quite a good place to live, really, for the stuff. I mean, there was a Chinese, there was an Indian... And it was a chip shop. 
all just literally around the corner from where I lived, plus a supermarket. There's a McDonald's. There, you know, it was. There's even more stuff there now. There's a Greg's. There's a KFC. Um, there's also a Domino's somewhere in that area, but I don't think that was there when I lived there. See, on a Saturday night, I would go and get chicken. I don't know. It was from the Chinese. Chicken bits with rice, like egg fried rice and these, I think it was seagull personally, but they said it was chicken. The bits were too big to be chicken, honestly. Albatross more like. So yeah, that was quite good. But basically what I did, I put broad cream in my hair because it was too long, it was too curly, too sticky outy, and I pushed my hair back and I thought maybe I looked okay but I didn't I really didn't and I mean that I really didn't look good so I shaved it off and I think I didn't have any I didn't didn't have any scissors so I shaved it off using a razor which is a very strange way to shave your hair it's not advisable takes ages and it can be messy but that's what I did and yeah I had uh, a shaved baldy baldy head for Christmas in 2007 but then between 2008 to 2010, I did use the hairdressers, apart from when I wanted to shave my hair. But I think generally I'd, I'd go into the hairdressers and, because I didn't know it was there, but my landlord used to use it. And I, when he saw what I did to my hair, he said, well, I didn't just go to the hairdressers. I said, I can't be bothered to travel all the way into town. And he laughed. He said, there's one round the corner. I said, really? He said, yeah, it's next to the off-license. We had an off-license, right? Hardly ever open. And all the windows, the front of the windows were covered in paper, newspaper. And you don't even know it was open because the door was open or the light was on. And it's like they'd open in the evening whenever they felt like it and then they close it so I had no idea what was going on there that was strange but the bloke was friendly it's just you couldn't see in like most off licenses you can see in can't you this was all, all the windows you couldn't see anything going on in there which made me want to go in even more <laughs> I want to see what's happening nothing weird happening it's just I don't know I don't know why. That was years ago though. It's probably been long gone. I think it closed down before I moved. And now we come to now. My hairstyle is still the old... Uh, I got this beard trimmer. And I can only trim my hair either... If I do it regularly, like, you know, every couple of days or whatever to keep it short, it's easy enough to do. But if I let it grow to like the length it is now, no matter how well charged it is, it won't cut through my hair unless I put a new razor blade in. And the razor blade's supposed to last for like three or four months. I cut my hair once and that's all it can do. It can still trim my beard, but it can't cut through my hair pretty much more than once. It blunts the, the razor blade or bl makes it a bit blunter. So it doesn't quite work so well. And because the razor blades are 10 pound each, 
Doesn't really work out very well. I don't live for your money. I don't live for your honey. All I need is love. So that's it. Well, that is it. So thank you for listening. I don't know how long I've been talking. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm going to bring this Sleepy Boring Objects or Monday's Sleepy Boring Objects to a conclusion. Hairstyles. Harry Styles. Sounds a bit like Harry Styles. Ooh. So, thanks for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button 
that as soon as I've done that, press the play button. This is in the days of CD players. Press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, a tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If 
I said, focus on your hands. And maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation 
This allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly.
so deeply peaceful. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy. physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs So 
deeply. All the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms, in shoulders, deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck, feelings in your wrists, muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relax. 
Sim. slow Peaceful in your stomach, your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even
joy. The space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice the forehead and your eyes. in a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace.
Sing God. feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off 
and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on 
will continue to relax deeply in those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, we're going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and relief. 
release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. The spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling calm, and they're feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and 
gentle, so smooth, and calm. And the feeling in your shoulders. Seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones. your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing, and you feel so shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your arms, and you may feel Almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gin. Focusing now on 
this sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees so relaxed 
muscles and your shins are perfectly aligned. start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort each step 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
14.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes you're going to begin counting down from ten to one right now ten
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? I could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, I do focus on the whole of your body before we focus on the legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. You just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it removes those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. And gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joint. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some. TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. You can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. his head with even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff is inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back side crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. as you go down to your calf muscles now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles and massage in every single tissue of that muscle healing every part same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And then when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. Might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting.
hands into the outer. Put your hands in your thighs. Massage the muscles in your bones. And to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension. Just to show how much you care. you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. So strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight. Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet. My feet also go. Whew, my toes clap. I'm so happy. And I know that talk about, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And 
also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, you may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. 
you know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on. There's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force it's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space this time to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep, depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting you can also if you choose stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process Gradually relaxing each muscle in your body. Effortlessly.
just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love. 
love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, as with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts, which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven. Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. And we're going 
going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing you needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your Each 
just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. take that away, this is what we do, this is what we do now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly, because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. Almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but 
also we start to realize that actually what's happening now is that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day, as your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health, things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to, because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger. longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier when sleeping It's the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and 
to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, this feels so nice, it's such a healthy place to be. within you, each and every day, moving forward, you are going to find that you're more relaxed, physically, 
expanding your mind as you more relax. And it's not that your thinking is slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity will disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry, doesn't, doesn't, des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 
twenty thousand one. I think it's good to relax if you choose. sound, you can feel twice as relaxed, or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy, and now, twenty, This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus. 
focus on your body, getting in touch with how you feel physically. And in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body, Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed. Naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus. parts of your body, your focus increases, which actually calms your mind, and when your mind started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing All of the fat, all of everything, every hair in your body is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills Relaxation increases. Because it 
to what you need. And what your mind starts to do. If that's what's needed. So if you're listening to this deep relaxation, that's what you'll get if what you need is a full sleep naturally in your deep as well as your mind drifts that's also what will happen and please by Pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to your body and your mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and then you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I focus in on a different part. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep.
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you have many little fingers and little bits and you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now and you may seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end and where is the zip Focusing on your knees. And just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and I'll move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe. It's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. This is a very trusting situation, really, because our necks are so fragile. And to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people, which is why massages are quite good, because it allows you to relax and to... Get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm. And as I massage the sides of your neck gently, moving from the bottom of your neck would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. And the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there, you can feel really nice, sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders. Now we move down your arms. You do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you I want it to still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms to your forearms into your wrists gently massaging that part the softer part which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, pressing down and massaging each finger. starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles of your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again in a really big V area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards taking a downward stroke to the middle of your back side inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Very gentle, and yet firm as you choose. And eventually, you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the, you know, the two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where the spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yeah, lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
with the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area with muscle tissue um, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest. So you're sort of connected to the chest from the back, connect together. And you're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area from your upper back all the way to your spine. down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands digging deep to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area Stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough 
سر دستی تو pleasure that you get from having your feet massage to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, I want to put a lot of pressure into your heel is amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. to the left leg to do exactly the same thing, starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, working down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure, of release that you experience from having your feet massaged, feel really Turn over on your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to back in touch with that area, as you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. You can just 
Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin, Massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And you're just massaging the whole of your chest. Chest around, it feels quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next, moving with my hands underneath, pretty much where your arms are. some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, and then moving down again, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually as my hands moving apart, I'm massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It can feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, so just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your 
Deine Katze. I'm going to move round to the other side again and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach of your stomach, like in circles around the belly button, and then going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in the thighs, the front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins. Put the pressure on either side of your shin. Gently. Softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot on each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. So many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling. Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big blow it's just a gentle say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you moved to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, do be aware of those sounds for the moment, be knowing, start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest a pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by But no 
whatsoever. So simple. And we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity grow within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Eight. 
his thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. waits for you to lead the way, waits for your permission, and when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax. body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Oh, I just want to relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit down for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting now like that, your body knows body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare to let go of everything and to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. Gradually 
there's that sense of relaxation in your body. It's a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go and be with you and relax it may seem all new and alien but it isn't it's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely to relax totally the most natural thing almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button and all the tension just releases it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of the clock just unwinding and it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger and it deepens. listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we need, maybe physically or emotionally, to need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, start to 
focus on the mind and the being and the notice of the feelings and come to a standstill and maybe just much much slower than before because your mind is not really needing and listening to my voice synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind and what you hear and hear feeling completely calm loose and relaxed really is body and mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones side of your scalp where your brain is you can scan to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply and as your brain continues to relax it sends those to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply relax even more completely
scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in your body. 
this moment. start off by focusing on the hands, just be aware of the hands, I'd like you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Just be kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. Very, very gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. raising your eyebrows, it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I would just like you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper limbs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. muscles of the torso lead to the side of your neck and also lead to the top of your back, your shoulders and your shoulders. And as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up. Maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down. 
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower make up the larger movements, which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings different muscles and the skin, the hairs, the arms, the any of the internal parts of your arms, the veins, the bones. 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing Forced in one. Then when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. And the lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. just seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. And as along chest, just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. This 
so much of the chest as there is the collarbone leading to the chest or the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not make different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Feeling with whatever feeling there is chest. And I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time and it feels it feels okay bit of pain in my right chest. Just a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. Like that's probably part of my upper back. between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas in the back Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes. to do that and if you ain't doing it there's 
to uh, make sure you get the pad part of your body need to be gentle with yourself your mind how much has your mind slowed down since you started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. It's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording of relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slowly go down. To your body. body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to leaving them there. And like in a, an escape pod, in a spaceship movie, a space movie, you know, when they get some little pod and it sends them <laughs>
outside his mental, outside of his uh, sucking attention and stress angry mind feelings that you don't want. Sucking it out through your skull. is something that you can do yourself on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just Thank you. 
seen in the physical form. It is not going to come to its own. focus on your fingertips, how do they feel a little bit tingly, this makes wonder if it's a bad texture, if you are exiting the body through the fingertips, so now I'm going to paint my painted eyes blue again, this time that the slide should be flowing downwards as you are repainting your eyes or painting marking painting
ntle le thuto ye nngwe ya baeng lenz le ya ba kae go thoba ka moka ka sehla ya go ba kae ke go hwetša sa Ese e se thomang ka moka ka mafelo a motho. Yeah. Ke ba tsena ka ntle ga fela. Ka moka ka mafelo a motho. Ka moka ka bogolo. Ke ba ha saile sa Xavier Dumas.